Here we are again with a real challenge. This is another well-loved kilt, which has been brought to me to be um, unfarbed. Um, and it's probably my greatest challenge yet. Um, and by the way, if I hear anybody, anybody makes a remark about the country of origin of these things, I will ban and block them for being a racist bastard. So there you go. Uh, your warning has been given. In any case, um, I, I rather like the tartan, you know. It's kind of in your face. It's kind of, you know, it's probably visible from space. But I kind of like it. And you can't mock it for not being traditional. Because let's take a look at the Buchanans and the Chisholms and the Urquharts and the rest of that. It's kind of, it, it's growing on me, right? This could be Stockholm Syndrome too, I don't know. But in any case, the problem I've got, it should be the usual routine. But my concern is that well let's let's look what has to be done we look at the front apron it's it's not centered on any element of the tartan i would say that's the most distinctive part it could be centered on this or this but it's centered maybe here that the person who's a good enough workman uh didn't really pay any attention when they slapped this thing together maybe it was the last kilt before lunch i don't know but so in a nutshell the only way that I could render this to to what I would consider a, you know, a good standard would be to completely disassemble this. Now, again, fortunately, they haven't thinned out in the back, right? So if we remove every stitch from this kilt, we can press it flat, being very, very careful and using a pressing cloth, because I, I don't think, at most, this has been in the same country as a sheep. That's the closest to wool it's ever gotten. <laughs> it's true. This this is maybe, I don't know, it's it's a synthetic fabric. It's not terrible, but whatever. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> but the problem is that the, the weave is, it's a little bit loose. And I'm afraid that I'm going to be learning as I go, right? Um, the stitching, because the, 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 the complication is that whoever used this they're stitching at about 12 stitch. They put the um, the foot of their sewing machine adjusted so that they're at least 12 stitches per inch. So it's extraordinarily close together. And I'm afraid that I'm going to tear the cloth. As careful as I can be, I'm going to tear the cloth by when I'm taking it apart. They've also done the usual, what I'm starting to consider as usual, trick of cutting through the middle of a pleat rather than using the edge of a, uh, a gap in a seam for the, the so-called button wall. So that's a mess. But fortunately, fortunately, we can shorten this to 21 inches, which makes that a, a moot point because that will wind up on the shop floor. So we can shorten it to that line. So I so I, I contacted the, the client. I says, here's, here's the problem. It's going to take me a day, a full day, to take this apart and you know and I asked him you know do you consider that worth the cost because the value of something is what for somebody is prepared to pay period stop end off right and I understand this is a, a well-loved gift from a well-loved family member so he's, it, I'm gonna ask him to make the decision is this worth the extra 200 bucks I have to charge and I'm knocking it down. If I'm doing master level work, I charge a master level price. If I'm doing apprentice level work, I, I charge an apprentice price. My my hourly rate isn't constant. So this is this is um, jobs worth work. But at the same time, it requires extreme care and extreme attention to detail. It's the worst sort of job in that it's simultaneously boring. And if you if your attention wanders for a second, you're done, right? So what I think I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a razor blade and a magnifying glass and that uh, the trick of slipping a pin or a needle under the, the thread I want to cut and then severing it. So, um, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to mark this down for the disassembly phase because it's not master level work. It's, it's, it's journeyman, it's apprentice level work. But at the same time, I think I'm going to benefit from by it because there's a learning curve and as somebody once told me or perhaps some i read somewhere that you get paid twice every job pays you twice if you, you do the job and you and you get you know you get money for it and that's the first way you pay you get paid but you also get paid in experience everything you do no matter how long you've been doing it 
if your eyes are open and if you're paying attention, there's a very good chance that you're going to learn something new. And that's a second form of payment because that is going to pay you in the future when you encounter this sort of work again. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to become, um, I, I want to do this really because it's, you know, there's, there's an incredible challenge of, of nitpicky detail here, but I think when I'm able to get it apart without damage, touch wood, and rebuild it again, I, I think it's, I think it's, um, I think it's going to look pretty cool. I hope. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Cheers. <laughs>